Okay, in this problem, we have a mass on a string of unknown length, and it oscillates as a pendulum with a period of four seconds. And we want to know what happens to the period if the mass is doubled, the string length is doubled, the string length is halved, and the amplitude is doubled. So if we just draw our picture first. Uh, let's do that. That's not that great either. So here's my, there we go, that's good enough. It's a dashed line, and here's my bob, or a mass. Right, and so this is my um, L, my unknown length L. This is my theta. Um, so the mass, if the mass is doubled, well, what we want to do first is we're going to start with our model for force. And so we're going to see if we can relate mass to the length of the pendulum and see if that there's a relationship there. And we're going to start with force to see if we can do it. So we're going to say the force is equal to MA. And um, we want to know we're going to think about the tangential force. Um, so we know if we think about a free body diagram, let's just do a little blue free body diagram, is we're going to have my force of gravity, and then I have the force of tension, right? And so the force of tension is going to give me, uh, let's see if I just break up my vectors, right? Uh, a y component that's going to, um, cancel with gravity, and then I'm going to have an x component. And so this, this x component is my tangential component. So I'm going to have that. So here, um, for my tangential component, I'm going to have mg sine theta is equal to ma. And in this example, we're going to assume that we're going to use a small angle approximation. And so that just means I'm going to keep, I'm going to have this pendulum, and if it were hanging down, I would just barely move it from the vertical. And, um, and then it would oscillate back and forth. And when that happens, then um, I can use the small angle approximation. And what that means is the small angle approximation says that sine of theta is equal to, approximately equal to theta for small theta. So if theta is like, say, less than one degree, then I can use this assumption or approximation. So I can rewrite that then as mg theta is equal to ma. And now the other thing I want to do is use um, the arc length. So something you may have learned in calculus or you might have learned in a pre-calc, another art, uh, math class. If this is my theta and this is my r, my radius, imagine this is... Uh, a circle, right, then um, this piece right here, this arc length along here, oops, is equal to, so we'll call this s, and s is equal to r theta. Okay, so um, if we think about our pendulum example, where does this, um, how do we, how are we using this? Well, um, we know that our theta, so now we're going to solve for theta, and we're going to say theta is equal to um, s over r. And for our pendulum, our l, if we were to have this, um, the pendulum swing all the way around like um, in a circle or in a half circle, then our l would actually be the radius. So we're going to then say that for, in our case, theta or r, l, r is equal to l, and so theta is equal to s over l. So I'm going to plug this in. So I'm going to plug it in here. Um, and I'm going to have mg, and my theta is going to be s over l is equal to m. And then a really is just the acceleration. So I can say, well, that's really just like ds squared, d um, squared s over ds dt squared. Right, so really that's just the acceleration, and the acceleration we're talking about is in the tangential direction. And so that's the same direction as our s, um, like on this, on this part of our circle, right? This, I'm going to have something that looks like this here, like it's going to go back and forth in a circular motion. Okay, so if I think about that, that's a lot like our spring example, where we have 
an S here and an S here. And what we did is we figured out that this is, uh, uh, this is simple harmonic motion. And so when we have simple harmonic motion, we know that we get something that looks like mg over L is equal to m. And um, so we, we get something like, uh, let's go back just a second, and I'm going to cancel out here because I forgot to cancel my M's, so I can cancel my M's in both cases, right? And I'm left with ds squared, or d squared s over dt squared is equal to g over L times s. Okay, so when we did this for the spring, we found that, okay, um, we can, we find that our omega is equal to, remember we had, it was equal to the square root of k over m. And so it was the same equation. We had, um, let's say we had, let's just back up a second, uh, times s. In the last case we had, I'll just write it in blue, d squared x over dt squared is equal to k over m times x. And so those two are the same equations. And what we found from this one was we found that our omega was equal to the square root of k over m. Well, in our case here, we have the same thing, but now we're just using g over l. So we have the same idea. So we, we're going to have, in this case, our omega is equal to the square root of g over l. OK, so we have um, a, like a, the equation that we need to use to figure out a, b, c, and d in this example. Um, so what we want to know is, how does our period change? Well, we don't know the period yet, but we can relate it to our omega. So I know that my, I'll write it over here, my omega is equal to 2 pi over t. So um, if I were to write that in, I, I want, I'm looking for, for really period. So I know that the period is equal to 2 pi over omega. So if I say, okay, 2 pi over omega, that tells me that my, oops, um, my t, so omega here, um, if I want to plug in for t, so t is going to be equal to 2 pi over omega or 2 pi times, I'm going to flip my g over l, so I'm going to have l over g, right? Since my omega is on the denominator, right, I can flip this equation, this uh, term right here. And so now what happens then when, how does the period relate to mass? So let's say this is a. Uh, so we'll say A is mass. How does it relate? No change in period. No change in period. And why? And that's because this equation 2 pi L over G doesn't depend on mass at all. So we're, um, we don't have any real change there. Well, how does for b, let's see what b is. Uh, b is um, the string length is doubled. So it does, our equation for t does depend on um, the string length, so l. Well, t is equal to the new t, we'll call it t2, right, is equal to t1, but we need, so it's going to be 2 pi and it's going to be 2L over G, right? So everything remains the same, except I really just, this is the same as if I had T1 times the square root of 2, right? I could pull this square root of 2 out here, right? And I'd still have the same equation that I have right here. And so if I were to multiply that square root of 2 times 4, because my, why did I say 4? Because my original equation says that my period is 4 seconds. Then my, um, my t, 
becomes, uh, I think it's five point, see if I can get it up, five point six, I believe. Yeah, something like. I don't have to do the math, but I'm, what I'm doing is I'm saying 4 times the square root of 2. And that's going to equal 5.65. So it increased. And now what about C? So C is, let's take a look. Uh, the string length is halved. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to say, well, then T, so um, L goes down by a half. What about that? Here, this one, L went up. Um, L goes down. So my T2 is going to equal to 2 pi. And now the square root of L over 2 over G. And that's really the same thing as my original T, T1 times 1 half square root. So what does that become? Well, 4 times um, the square root of 0.5 is 2.8. So here t is equal to 2.8 seconds. And then finally d, let's see, look back again. d, the amplitude is doubled. So the amplitude is doubled. Uh, but looking at, oops. So my amplitude is doubled, A goes up. Well, T doesn't depend on amplitude, right? It's not in my equation. So T, there's no change. And that's it.